Hey, I'm Thomas R, and for my 2020 Quest project, I decided to work on stereo camera depth and disparity mapping with OpenCV on Raspberry Pis. So first of all, what is disparity mapping? Well, disparity mapping is the ability to take two frames, which are slightly offset from one another, and create a 3D scene from them. So uh, in this image, for example, you can see that there's two slightly different perspectives of the hallway, um, but by taking these little differences, you're actually able to calculate depths. Now, you're very familiar with this, even if you don't realize it, um, because your brain actually does this wherever you look. So your ability to see if things are farther or closer to you is solely based on your brain able to calculate um, sort of those differences. Computers are able to actually pick up each individual pixel. And by counting those number of pixels, computers are able to get accuracy down to the millimeter in terms of these depth maps. And keep in mind, these are just coming from two cheap webcams that you can buy on Amazon for 30 bucks, and you're able to get these really high quality, nice scenes. Last year, I worked on OpenCV self-guiding cars for my recital project. Um, and while this was a, a different technology completely, I worked on lane detection and SIFT feature detection, um, I did start to see um, the inner workings or intermeshing of cars and computer vision. And so that got me thinking, well, if I'm doing these models, is there anything I could do to apply my sort of work into real cars? Now, obviously, I wasn't going to build a self-guiding car or self-driving car, um, but I sort of landed on driver awareness and safety. Um, there's obviously tons of car crashes every year. And if I felt or I, you know, if drivers had the ability to see the cars and objects and people around them, um, I thought that this could potentially be sort of a viable way to help reduce some of those. So my original goal for the project was actually inspired off of a Tesla's autopilot dashboard. So I'm sure many of you have seen this if you've ever been in a Tesla um, in front of the driver on the dashboard. You can see the cars and pedestrians and telephone poles and mailboxes and whatever whizzing by. And this was sort of what got me thinking about what if I was able to do this, but instead of having it in a Tesla only, um, make an affordable, easy to implement technology for any sort of car. So here's my initial prototype, which I ended up filming in the car. This was the initial idea for the project. A small display on top of the dashboard which showed the driver's surroundings. The information for this would come from small Pi sort of stations around the car. Each one comprised of two cameras which fed information into a Pi which would stream back to the central display. Here it would get processed and combined into a 3D view of what might be surrounding the car. This would help the driver understand where cars were around it, as well as other obstacles like pedestrians or stuff that could lead to an accident. My journey had several steps and each one sort of posed its own challenges and had its own rewards. Firstly, I did the simple step and got my Raspberry Pi and got its GPIO pins working and whatnot. So Raspberry Pi, for anyone who doesn't know, is a really tiny computer that costs around $50, um, but you're able to run code on it really well. Um, and it's also great for implementing real world things because of its GPIO pins. Um, these small header pins allow you to actually communicate directly with things like Arduinos and motors and LEDs. Um, unlike your Mac, which only has two USB-C ports, uh, the Raspberry Pi has all of these different um, ports which you're able to use to do these wonderful sort of projects. I didn't end up actually using these but I did write code um, for like a servo controlled camera and uh, some LED indicators for the driver um, so that was something that would certainly be a nice sort of extension to this project uh, if I plan on continuing it. Next I installed OpenCV on my Pi. Now, this may only be one slide, but it certainly took a lot longer. Um, this project took about a month and it took that long because of a lot of different missing dependencies in uh, the Raspberry Pi operating system installation itself. Um, but ultimately, after tons of trial and error, 
I got to install and run sort of some code that I wrote to open a webcam, and I, that was super exciting, but it taught me a lot about working outside of an IDE um, and actually working on a, on Ubu, or on a Raspberry Pi um, in sort of the real world, so to speak. After that, I set up the display and the two webcam streams. Now, the display you saw in the prototype video in the car, um, and that's simply just hooking up a display to the Raspberry Pi. Um, in addition, I also set up two webcam or a, a dual webcam stream. Now, I was expecting this to be super, super easy, and it ended up being quite difficult. Um, and this was another another huge learning lesson um, because of sort of two reasons. Um, one, the the webcams that I chose had this slightly different uh, image streaming codec, which OpenCV didn't default to. So I actually had to really dig into the hardware and software of the cameras and learn how they sort of communicate um, information through their USBs. And secondly, I actually learned about the USB bandwidth of Raspberry Pis. Um, and this is something that as a programmer who's worked um, primarily either on my computer or entirely dependent or you know in the real world um, things like this which in retrospect look really obvious um, are sort of interesting tidbits that you pick up when you're trying to work in between the software and hardware world uh, then the hardest step is called undistortion and rectification um, now, on the left is the undistortion. This obnoxious GIF is basically the computer trying to figure out what the distortion of the lens is. So every camera you have, whether it's a DSLR or your iPhone, has slight distortion in the photos it takes. Now, usually they're not obvious to us, but for a computer, it's crucial that they understand them. So uh, this process seen on the left is basically it taking tons of different photos of this checkerboard um, and then it uses the distances in between the uh, little corners to actually calculate how to adjust the frame afterwards. On the right is the rectification. Um, and rectification is basically aligning two uh, images which are taken in 3D space onto the same plane. Now, this is a lot more complicated than the undistortion. And unfortunately, I didn't actually get it to work on a web stream. I got it to work with images um, but because of the processing power of the Raspberry Pi um, and some efficiency problems, um, I didn't actually get it to work on a video stream. Um, so unfortunately, my sort of original plan for the project for the sort of self or the for the car detection um, wasn't actually possible. But I still did get disparity maps to work. Um, on the right is sort of a horse scene and you can see, that grayscale image is actually the depth maps at work. Um, same goes for the left side, and this was really great. Um, if I had more time and I was able to sort of dig into the video streams again, it's small errors that are sort of adding up. Um, I'm sure I could get it, and it, then from there, it would just be a simple implementation of object detection, which I've actually already written the code for. I was super fortunate to have my neighbor, who is not only a self-driving engineer, but also one of the founding team members of OpenCV as my mentor. Uh, not only did I talk to him a lot in person and through email, but I was fortunate enough to go down and actually visit Waymo. I got to you know, ride in the car and actually talk with him and some of his team members about how they work on these super, super large scale projects where they've got all these different teams um, with different abilities working together to create this one really powerful product. And that was an amazing experience and I'm really appreciative of him giving his time to help me. Um, and one final thing, as I look back on the project, one thing that I would change uh, was Python. I use C++ for my project, but Python would have made a hundred times more sense. Um, it's not as efficient, I know, but it's certainly a lot easier to program and that code snippet would have saved me about two or three months of work. Um, so overall, if you're thinking of working on OpenCV, uh, just use Python. Anyway, thank you for listening.